think about faith, we often focus on belief. Some churches will engage skeptics or non-believers by immediately trying to get them to believe something about Jesus. Now, belief is important, but sometimes we can fall victim to the misguided notion that once someone believes, their journey's over. But that's far from true. In Luke, we see that Jesus doesn't just want people to believe certain things about him. He wants them to live their lives in a unique way. In fact, Jesus spends much of his time in the Gospels teaching people how to live. It's a good thing, too, because figuring out how to live is one of the primary questions every human being has to answer. Deciding what to value or how to make decisions or how to deal with conflict, what to put our time towards, these are lifelong pursuits. When it comes to questions about living, the answers become even harder when we're bombarded with conflicting messages. I mean, we live in a culture where around every corner or on a million web pages, there's advice on how to live. We can read self-help books, talk to friends, go to therapy, listen to experts, model our parents, or just go with our gut. With all of these options and more, we can become disoriented, confused about how to move forward and how to live our own life. And it's in the midst of this that Jesus offers his disciples God's take on the matter. And more often than not, God's wisdom for living challenges what we hear in the world. As you've learned from your reading, Jesus offers the disciples practical advice on how to deal with common struggles in life. From how to make promises, to what to do about conflict, to how to treat your money, there isn't an aspect of our life that God isn't interested in guiding and influencing. The Old Testament and New Testament are full of laws that direct us and help us figure out how to live. But there isn't a law about everything. I mean, we as Christians still have to make decisions that don't always have easy answers. And it was no different in Jesus' time. That's why Jesus sums up God's desires for how we live with three simple laws or rules. They came, in fact, as a response to a lawyer who asked Jesus a question in Luke 10. What must I do to gain eternal life? The man asked. In other words, how should I live? And Jesus responded, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love others, love self, in that order. Sounds easy. But remember, this is not any old love. It's not a fluid understanding of love that we get to define for ourselves. No, Jesus defines this love for us and asks us to follow him to practice it. Now, as you study Jesus' sermons, particularly the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew and the Sermon on the Plain in Luke, we will get a sense of what Jesus means by love, what Jesus' radical kind of love looks like. And I want to give you a heads up, a warning of sorts, that sometimes Jesus is going to really surprise you, frustrate you, confuse you, even anger you. But I encourage you not to argue with Jesus too quickly or to dismiss his teachings as too impossible. Rather, remember that we are learning a different way to live, a way that takes a lifetime to perfect. In the midst of a world that offers so much advice, we will learn to love upward, outward, and inward. This is how a disciple lives. In a world that tells us to look out for ourselves first, foremost, and exclusively, this is indeed different. Thank you.